Hello again, EDF fans. I just wanted to come to you quickly on my initial impressions of this game so far. Um, I played the first uh, 12 missions, and uh, I do have a Let's Play going on if you're interested, a Let's Play uh, series. But uh, I just wanted to cover some of the things that I've noticed so far. It may change in the future, but uh, first I want to start about the uh, the damage effects on the enemies. It was a really cool thing. It definitely looks a lot better. There's a lot more particle effects. The explosions look better. It just overall just really nice looking and I mean it's not the greatest looking game of course it never has been but um, I like the improvements they're making every time and it definitely is noticeable especially in the uh, the uh, effects of the enemies and just stuff like that just little things that add up over time but uh, also the frame rate has not been an issue yet um, and there's been a lot of enemies that's another positive I would say um, the, the first 12 missions I've only only played 12 but there's been a lot of enemies on the screen in the first few missions I've been very surprised just how many they've given so that's cool. I've always liked always liked to see that. It's always more fun to have more enemies on the screen, and um, haven't no, no, noticed any frame rate issues with that as well. In addition to that, so that's cool. I haven't tried split screen yet though, so I'm not sure how that works. But I'm just playing on a regular PlayStation as well. I'll be coming back later with information on the Pro when I get that. Um, another thing I noticed uh, is a lot of mission variety. Uh, I've been pretty impressed. There's you start out here at the base, but you go to a variety of different locations, uh, different city types. Uh, there was one where had a bunch of pipes and like an industrial type city, um, like a bunch of uh, I don't know what you call them, but just a bunch of pipes and a lot of uh, like machinery type things for the city. And there was there was some snow level. There was rain, raining. There's mountains. So far, just in the first 12 missions, there's been quite a few uh, variety and stuff like that. Just little additions just make it really look a lot, a lot better. Although, if, even if it is a look a little bit like a Splatoon sometimes, but I think it's cool <laughs> with the enemies. Um, another thing is they added new game mechanics. Um, I was kind of concerned they were just going to play it really safe, but uh, they definitely have not played it safe in this game. There is a lot of new things they've added. Um, for example, you can level up weapons now. Um, it actually pays to have the same weapon again because there's stars next to each stat. And if you get the, the same weapon again, it can increase those uh, stars and increase the stats on the weapons. So that's definitely a cool thing. And it hasn't seemed like it. No, it doesn't seem like it's it's affected how many weapons they drop. As far as like it seems like there's still a lot of weapons to get. But in addition, you also can increase their stats. So I really like that. Also, right here, if you notice on the ground here, there's a circle around you. Um, vehicles for air raider and ranger, and when he sprints, has like a circle that picks up items in that radius, and you can increase that radius as well. But uh, but yeah, uh, the weapons, like I said, le weapons leveling up. Um, also, um, auxiliary items for each each character. There's each character has an extra item you can equip that'll allow you to alter some game playing uh, mechanics, such as like Wing Diver can get uh, cores that'll upgrade her her dashing or her energy, max energy or, or energy regeneration or just various things like that. Like I said, I haven't seen all of them yet, so there might be a lot more, but just little stats like that you can increase. And like for um, for Ranger, you can actually encrypt a, you can equip a vehicle now, which is cool. Or you can choose to equip an item for yourself, which will increase like your sprinting speed, your dash speed, your rolling, stuff like that. So I'm not sure what else that would be available, but that's what I've seen so far. So that's pretty cool. Um, Air Raider, um, now for his auxiliary. Oh, actually, I don't think Air Raider has an auxiliary. I'm not sure about that yet, but Fencer has auxiliary where he can uh, alter his shield and he can alter his dashing. Like, one thing said dash twice instead of dash once in a row. Uh, another one said uh, damage resistance for shields and just things like that where you can increase uh, stats in your character or interesting gameplay mechanics. So that's really cool. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Yeah, for the, and as far as the uh, the ranger, um, there's interesting alterations for each class. As far as I, as I mentioned, like the wing diver has, well, the wing diver actually has some new weapon types. She has a charge weapon, which uh, which actually you charge as long as much as you want. Like say you can charge half the magazine or the full magazine, and then while you're flying, it just shoots for you, and then uh, then you have to recharge it again. So it, they they didn't just play it safe and have the same weapons, but they actually made some weapons that you have to charge up, um, and, and just new new weapon types um, the ranger has like I said has vehicles and he can sprint now which is crazy I mean that's been something we've been wanting for a long time but uh, I'll get to the, the sprinting later though in, in the in the video here but uh, air raider can now reload air raids that's EDF 2 had some of that but 
that just it's just so amazing. The first time I played Air Raider, oh, it was like so exciting because like those those big 150 millimeter shots, like one big shot from the sky, or the ones that you know call down like a machine gun fire, you can now reload those and use those as weapons. So that's really cool. I mean, there's still weapons or air raids that have the build points, but um, the ones there's some that have the reload times, which is really cool. So you can almost use it as a weapon instead of just being helpless until you kill something. Because you get punished before if you called artillery down and you, you miss something, you wouldn't be able to use it again. So that's very cool. Uh, the vehicles seem to uh, control better. Uh, definitely the motorcycle is not um, garbage in this game as far as controlling. Uh, I've only had two two encounters with vehicles, but they've both been pretty decent. So I'm hopeful for uh, for the, the, the uh, vehicles controls in this game. So we'll see how that goes. But I've been pressed so far. Um, What's else? As far as Fencer, I'm not sure of anything that's new. The only thing I've noticed so far, and I've only played him twice, um, is that you can't... I, I use a shield, and you can't, like, reflect, dash, reflect, dash really fast, at least not with my current setup, because maybe some aux auxiliary weapons could maybe improve that. But I noticed that's kind of like a nerf, maybe a little bit. You can still have two hammers. Um, you can still dash between each shot of the hammer. There's still damage reduction on hammers, but... I didn't notice too much different yet on Fencer, but I don't have everything unlocked either, to be fair. Or not even not even near everything unlocked. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm also impressed with the first few missions. Um, that was another weak thing in, in 4.1, or, or EDF 4, was the first few missions were pretty boring, just pretty straightforward. You go to a city, you see a bunch of ants, and, you know, two waves, and it's over. Whereas this at least has an interesting story, interesting uh, start, like you start down here in the, in the underground base, and... It's, it's interesting. It's not like boring missions that I felt were um, an issue in, in, in the previous games. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, also, I would say that a positive, at least in my eyes, is you can't start on Inferno or Hardest mode. You have to start on Easy, Normal, or Hard. So that really would keep... I think it'll keep uh, a lot of rooms from having you know brand new players come into an Inferno room or something. So that, I think, can be a positive thing. Um, also... I'm not 100% sure how it works yet, but I'll, I'll get to that later. But um, it seems like you don't you aren't punished uh, completely if you do fail the mission. You do get some rewards out of it, whether it be armor or items. So that's that's not terrible. I don't know how I feel about that, if it's a positive or negative, but it is something that's new. Um, and now onto the uh, onto the the negatives or the neutral things. Uh, and there's not too many, but there is some. Um, for one thing, I noticed the uh, ranger, or actually all classes, cannot equip two of the same weapon. Um, for example, except except fencer. I, I did check fencer. You can equip two sand hammers, two machine guns, but uh, the other classes cannot. So, like for example, you can't do two lysanders with ranger anymore, where you could shoot and then switch and shoot and then switch, do high DPS, which I don't mind necessarily because it just you felt like you had to use it when you when you had the option. But now that you don't, you're more encouraged to take two different types of weapons, which I kind of like. Um, but uh, and but air raids as well. You can't same take two of the same air raids, so that could maybe be somewhat of a negative, or maybe it's just part of the balance. I'm not sure yet. Um, also, you, I'm not sure. If maybe some people would view this as a positive. Maybe most people would view this as a positive, but I I kind of view it as a negative. Is um, when you pick up armor or weapons, you get armor and weapons for all classes at the end of the mission. So as far as I can tell, it seems like. Each weapon or item armor box has an, a, a class associated to it. So you may get, you know, three armor for ranger, seven for wing diver, three for fencer. Just, you know, it seems like it's random numbers from what I can tell. So I guess in a positive way, you're not being punished for just picking one class to start. But at the same time, I kind of like that where you would start one class and then you'd finish it. And then you, hey, okay, I get to start fresh in a new class and start over and, and get to, you know, work this character up. But now you're actually slowly leveling each character together. Maybe they did that because there's so many weapon upgrades now that you have to worry about, but uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. We'll see how long it takes to get everything. Um, another thing is the sprint. I don't... Unless there's an auxiliary weapon for the fence or the, for the ranger later that you can use, I was expecting the sprint to be something where, like say right now, I'm moving backwards. I could start sprinting backwards and shooting. Or at least sprinting backwards to get away, but the thing with the sprint is you just hold down the sprint button and you just run forward. You can you can turn around with your camera like this, but it's not sharp turns. So um, you can't really use the sprint in battle. It, you still have to roll when you're fighting, which I'm not sure how I feel about on that, honestly. 
I, I think I kind of like it because I don't want Rain Ranger to be too good. I always viewed him as like a, a challenge class. If you want a really good challenge, you want to pick Ranger class. But like right now, I can't just turn away and run and sprint. I have to still roll because if I start sprinting, it takes a while to start up. But maybe there's, like I said, some auxiliaries to change that. We'll see. And then last of all, I guess, the, the probably the big disappointment is there's no new classes. But to be fair, I mean, they did a lot of changes in this game, and I appreciate the changes they did take, so I... I wouldn't. I wouldn't have expected the new class, but it would have been nice. I've always, I've always mentioned this in previous uh, games and to friends that I would like a class that. Well, I have two ideas for a class. One would be a healer class, which I think would be kind of a cool idea. And not only would he heal, but they could also do like, um, like a uh, suppression or a controlling. Like, there's controllers in MMOs sometimes where they do crowd control. So what they could do is they could heal the group, they could buff the group, they could debuff the enemies, they could, like, ensnare the enemies on the ground, or just... I think that would be a cool thing. Like, th like the flamethrower, for example, would be like an enfeebler-type weapon where you would just have a big fan of flame that could stun enemies for the other the other team to fight, or, you know, you could... Like, the, the, the wire trap gun also is an example, maybe, of a of a, a snare type weapon but just something like that I think would be cool but uh but anyway yeah I'm, I'm very happy with this This definitely feels like an EDF game you don't have to worry about that it's it's definitely EDF it has um, a bunch of missions that aren't too long and just a lot of you know variety of weapons and enemy types and it definitely feels like EDF and uh, that's what I was hoping and uh and all the improvements for the most part are improvements all the changes so anyway I just figured I'd come in with the early impressions and uh like I said, if you're interested, check my Let's Play out, and I'll be doing videos uh, for, you know, just like EDF 4.1. I'm going to be doing this a lot. I'm going to be doing strategies. I'm going to be doing just fine, just trying to break this game as best I can and have fun with it. So hope you stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching.